The stencil fix has been a staple in my shop ever since I first built it. It's just so handy when it comes to holding down a stencil and applying soda paste. But it has a couple of downsides and they are all connected to this, the vacuum. Using a shop vac is a clunky setup. Not everyone has the space as I have and even then, it means I can't put anything where the vacuum goes. I also need to set it up every time I want to use the stencil fix and it is a bit cumbersome to set it up. The hose prevents me from being able to rotate or rearrange the box to get a better angle for applying the paste. It's also hard to move the stencil once the vacuum is turned on, meaning I need to align the stencil without the vacuum, hold it down and then turn the vacuum on. That's usually pretty fiddly but often misaligned. Honestly, it's good enough but I can't just let good enough be. But do I have the fix for this? Introducing the Stencil Fix Portable. It's a surprisingly simple solution to all those issues. Build a vacuum into the box. It's all self-contained. With a power switch, a potentiometer to control the suction force, the battery, electronics, and a compressor to create the vacuum. This is not actually my idea. A commentator on the last video gave me this idea. Shout out to Alex Southwell for that great inspiration. There are a couple of things to take care of with this design. The motor, the impeller, and the impeller housing. First up is the motor. I start with a brushed DC motor as they are readily available and pretty cheap. Ordering those, I must have gotten carried away a little and ordered this bad boy. This one will certainly create enough torque, but it's just not what I was looking for. Next up is the impeller and the housing. I know from a little research on the topic that some handheld devices are using compressor style impellers. Some searching led me to find this open scat model of an impeller. The nice thing about these kinds of models is that I can easily tweak some of the values to adjust the model to what I need. The downside is that I will likely never really learn how to use it properly. The user interface seems to actively fight me and I'm a bit too used to the workflow of Fusion and the likes. Anyways, after exporting the mesh, I can now import it into Fusion, transform it into a body and then add some features. I also need a housing, basically a way to separate the low pressure area from the high pressure one. Looking at compressors for cars, they tend to use a ring or torus around the impeller into which the blades push the air. And this is my attempt at recreating that shape. Again, the idea is that the air is pushed outwards into the toroid and then pushed through the only exit of the housing. Turned out a bit teapot-like. Hmm. Here we go. I cleaned up the parts and they're ready to assemble. I already wired the larger of the two available motors and pushed it into the housing. The impeller just press fits on the shaft for now. And on goes the teapot with some heat sets and screws. Ready for the first test. Setting the power supply to the motor's rated 4.5 volts and giving it a try. <laughs> As expected, nothing really happens. The setup doesn't even engage the springs, not to mention create a vacuum strong enough to hold the stencil in place. It does move some air, but not a lot. But all is not lost. There's a lot I can learn from this. First off, I need stronger motors um, and they need to be more compact. The obvious choice here, I think, are brushless motors. I'm also not at all convinced that the teapot is the pinnacle of design. It creates this really hard to print edge in the torus and the design is constrained by the air that can be moved through this pipe. Not sure it really is a concern here, but uh, it doesn't feel right. Focusing on the first point, the motor. Taking a look at the shop where I got the LiPo for this project from, it's pretty clear that those motors are not quite the right size for what I had in mind and really also not the right price range. Next up are drone motors. That's more promising. Many compact motors and especially many with high RPM, which I think I will need. These kind of motors come with a KV rating, a number that specifies how much RPM we get per one volt. A 1000 KV motor will spin at 1000 RPM when driven with one volt. 
or at 10,000 RPM when driven with 10 volt. Motors with lower KV rating and therefore lower RPM trade the RPM for torque. My gut feeling is that I want a lot of torque to maintain a high enough vacuum. So I'm looking for a motor with low KV rating that runs off three cell LiPos like the ones I'm planning to use. Now onto the second issue, the impeller housing. Many of the impeller designs I was looking at try to push the air somewhere, for example, into an engine. But in my case, I just want to expel the air and create a vacuum. So all I need is a base for the motor to rest on and an upper chamber to contain the vacuum. There obviously needs to be a gap between the upper chamber and the base for the air to go somewhere. So here's what I came up with. These fins are not strictly necessary, but man do they look good. The motor just screws on the base and the upper chamber goes on top of it and held in place with screws. That's a promising design, which I'm going to iterate on. Okay, let's take a quick look at what I hope is the final cat. First comes the base. Here's where the motor mounts onto. And here's where the perf bolt for the electronics is mounted on. This hole gives access to the USB port for the microcontroller. And this hole is for the rocker switch turning everything on or off. And that's the lid for the battery so that I can add or remove the battery once everything is assembled. There's also a retainer for the pot with a printed thread and a knob that goes over the pot. On goes the lid which comes in two parts and i show in a second why that is needed. Then comes the motor and the impeller. Looking at the cross section, the impeller is held in place with a hex nut that can only be screwed in with access to the motor as I need to turn this part here. And this is ultimately the reason why the lid comes in two parts as it would not fit over the impeller. Next up is the top section that holds the vacuum. There are four screws that go all the way down and hold everything in place. And this is where the springs go and the rest of the assembly is almost exactly like the previous version of the stencil fix. First the lid. The only change here is that I removed the outermost line of holes as the stencil I get from JLC PCB is a bit smaller and would not cover these holes. Next up is the stencil lifter on which the stencil rests and that is pushed up by the springs if no vacuum is present. And finally, the PCB is held in place by the PCB holder. This is something that I designed specifically for a PCB so that the PCB nicely fits in and is held in place tightly. And that's all there is to the design. For the electronics, I want to keep it simple so that everyone can build this with not much more than a soldering iron and maybe a helping hand. The motor is a brushless motor with three phases. It can no longer be driven by a simple voltage source like a battery. I'm using one of those instead. This is an electronic speed controller or ESC for short. Normally drones use boards with four ESCs on them, but you can get them as single versions like this one. Just make sure they work with the type of battery that you want to use. 3 cell LiPo in my case. The ECS takes in power and a control signal and outputs three phases. These phases are timed precisely to magnetize the calls in the motor in a way that makes the motor spin. The control signal is the same PWM signal that is used for hobby servos, which is really handy as pretty much any microcontroller can create such a PWM signal. However, I want to control the speed of the motor with a potentiometer. So I will need a microcontroller to read in the pot's position and translate it into a PWM signal. This board is pretty compact and doesn't come with many features. Ideal for this project. It's also a Raspberry Pico 2040, which is a welcome change from the usual ESP32 boards I'm using normally. The board runs off five volts, normally supplied by USB. I need to convert that down from the battery's 12 volt. I'm going to use this little buck converter as it works with a wide range of input voltages and as it's pretty compact too. Here I have assembled everything on a small perf board. It's not the prettiest but it holds everything together and everyone should be able to build this at home with the minimal tools. One day I might get into crimping my own connectors but until then I have to live with soldering these cables directly onto the pins. Let's hook this and the ESC up to the battery and um, connect it to the rocker switch. It got a little messy but here we are. 
it's important to make sure that the battery cable is long enough so that it pokes out of the case. It's just not possible to connect the battery otherwise. All there's left to do is to assemble the rest of the stencil fix and flash the program that reads the pot's position and controls the speed of the motor accordingly. Something I learned from earlier tests is that the ESC and motor are really responsive to speed changes, which together with the inertia of the impeller will lead to the entire assembly spinning around its center. So I added a low pass filter in code to smooth out the changes, which really helps mitigating this effect. All right, I'm pretty excited to test it out. That sound you hear when turning on is created by the ESC using the coils of the motor as a crude speaker. You can even see the impeller move a little when the melody plays. Oh, that's frightening, but there's a lot of air coming out, so I'm hopeful it will actually create a strong enough vacuum. Oh yes, the stencil gets pulled down pretty quickly, which is much better than I was hoping for. Let's go full throttle. It's loud, but much quieter than it was without the stencil. And the stencil seems to be held in place quite well, I can't really move it. But let's see how practical it really is. The fact that I can choose a lower speed means I can easily move the stencil around and the fact that there is no vacuum hose means I can look at it from various angles. It's important as the stencil itself creates a little shadow that can sometimes look like it's being misaligned. Now for applying the paste. Yep, that works nicely. Let's take a look under the microscope to see how good it really turned out. That's awesome, near perfect as far as I can tell. So there you have it, the stencil fix portable. I'm really happy how the build turned out and how well everything is working. Let me know down in the comments if you would like to see any further improvements to the design and let me know whether you're thinking about building this one or maybe the previous version. CAT, STLs and code are on GitHub and linked in the description down below. Please leave me a like if you found this build useful and subscribe if you want to see more builds. Until then, bye.